In 1990, the church dwindled to about 20 people, and there were some who thought that we should just shut the doors. To keep the church going, one member loaned $3,000 to the church so they could pay the bills. Times were lean. That year, a meeting was held to talk about shutting the place down for good. One old member, Carol Lund, a retired barber, slowly stood up and stated in no uncertain terms, over my dead body, are they ever going to close the doors of my church? And they didn't. And one of the main reasons that they didn't was because of four faithful families, Elward and Eileen Smith, Cliff and Martha Broadwater, Carl and Sonia Mason, and Kyle and Marcy Ingram. The four men served as elders, and the four women were deaconesses, along with Vicki Johnston and several others who'd been pillars of the church for decades. Back in those days, the tech revolution was sweeping the world, but at Pine Grove, we were a few years behind. We were still using an old, clunky overhead projector to change slides. During the Christmas program, our lighting guy was in the back, eight feet up in the air, operating our amazing homemade coffee can and duct tape spotlight. The public address system was an outdated 1960s soundboard that gave you static whenever you turned the sound up or down. But Christmas was a joyful time of celebration at Pine Grove. We had plays. Oh, did we ever have plays? We had choirs, children's bell choirs, solos, songs, carols, candlelight services, caroling, hay rides, and good old-fashioned children's programs, complete with angels, shepherds, wise men, Mary, Joseph, and the baby in the manger. The backdrops were made from our very own patented, specially painted refrigerator boxes by Susan. Oh, the precious memories of days gone by, of the wonderful people we've loved and lost over the years. This little country church has been the center of so much love and so much fellowship that the memories bring tears. And so we're calling the 1990 Advent candle the candle of love for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God so loved the world. And over the years, there have been so many precious partners who followed that example, partners who gave and kept on giving their love to the people of this community. Here's to the love of days gone by. And here's to the love of many days to come. Here's to the love of the Savior who came to earth as a babe so long ago. We thank God for his great love. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What a promise. What a promise. It almost seems too good to be true. You see, here, here's how it works. I'll give it to you in the ABCs. Admit you are a sinner and need Jesus as your Savior. Second, believe. Believe that God came down as a man and died for your sins. You see, your failures don't have to, to remain on your account. One of these days there's a judgment day coming and God's going to say, okay, get out the roll. You know, we'll, we'll check out your good deeds and we'll check out your bad deeds. And guess what? Everybody flunks because of point A, all have sinned. But he died for those sins. He said, I'll take all those away from you. And that's where the point C comes in. Confess Jesus Christ as your Savior. Say, Jesus, save me from my sins. I want to be a Christian. I want you in my life. 